I know someone's going to mention the sombrero, so um, I just thought the background was a little bit plain without it there, and it's making a statement. It's making a statement about my views on cultural appropriation. Right, now, question number 19 in the book of loads of questions. You have the chance to meet someone with whom you can have the most satisfying love imaginable. The stuff of dreams. And, well, I'll tell you, if you've got my imagination, that's some pretty fine stuff right there. Sadly, you know that in six months, that person will die. Oh, great. Knowing the pain that would follow, would you still want to meet the person and fall in love? What if you knew your lover would not die, but would betray you? In the back of the uh, book, there are some follow-on questions. In love, is intensity or permanence more important to you? How much do you expect to, from someone who loves you? What would make you feel most betrayed by your mate? Indifference? Dishonesty? Infidelity? OK, well, part one of this question I find pretty easy. Yes, I'm going to say yes. Yes, I do want to meet her and I do want to fall in love with her. Because, well, I get, and I'm quoting here, the most satisfying love imaginable. I want some of that. Can you imagine the intensity? It's going to be a fantastic six months. And surely it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. So yes, just for the the wonderfulness of those six months, that's a really good reason for wanting to meet her and fall in love. Um, now, of course, it's going to hurt when she dies. Of course, it's going to be, it's going to hit me here. It's going to be a, a, a tremendous loss. But nowhere does it say that I die. I, I can carry on living uh, a, a full and possibly potentially satisfying life. Yes, I will be hurt, but I knew that she was going to die when I met her in the first place. Um, so I had six months to prepare for this and life just goes on. People do generally bounce back from things. And it might even, who knows, in the long run, uh, make it more easy for me to attract future mates because uh, other women will see just how much I loved this woman and, and made her happy for the last six months of her life. And they will think, yes. Then, well, some of them might think, oh. And others might think, well, rationally, yeah, that's the sort of honest guy who's capable of genuine love that I want to be with. So I might even be helping my long-term prospects of happiness to, to have loved and lost in this way. But also, there's an unselfish uh, reason for this in that she was going to die. She had six months to live, but I did something wonderful, didn't I? I gave her the best possible, I hope, six months of her life. She got that same intense, passionate, satisfying love imaginable because surely the, the, you know, the best love is requited, so she loved me as well, right? So she, I made happy for the last six months of her life. And it's worth doing for that, isn't it? Because if I loved her, then I, I must really care for her. And if I really care for her, I must want the best for her. And what better could I do with the last six months of her life than make those last six months as good as they could possibly be? Perhaps, who knows, before she met me, she was miserable. But maybe when she dies, she's going to be thinking to herself, do you know what? This, this wretched life I had was all worth it because of the last fabulous six months. And I don't regret it at all. Wouldn't it be great if I could do that for someone? If you love someone, surely you should try to make them as happy as you possibly can. And I will have not only, after she's dead, the memory of those wonderful six months, but also the knowledge that I did the right thing. I did that wonderful thing. I gave her, this person I love, the best possible end to her life. So yes, part one, yes. Part two, what if you knew your lover would not die but instead would betray you. Now, isn't it a funny thing that you might actually prefer someone to die than that? You might think, well, if you care for someone, you don't want them to die. That's the worst thing that could possibly ha happen to someone. If you cared for her, you're going to want her to carry on and be as happy as she possibly can. And yes, she hurt you, but you know, you're know, you the one who got hurt there. She might not be quite so hurt, and she might then go on to be happy with this other bloke. Um, and yet, doesn't quite work like that, does it? Because if she, oh, shock, horror, out of the blue, <gasps> betrayed me, I might suddenly think, oh, this has made a, a lie of the last six months of my life because I thought I had the most satisfying love imaginable, which surely is requited. So if she was as in love with me as it's possible for a person to be, then how could she have betrayed me? So she couldn't have been that in love with me. So the last six months were a lie. That's going to be, that's going to really mess me up psychologically, I think. Um, but here the question sort of breaks because 
with the dying, I knew in advance that she was going to die. So presumably it's the same here. So I knew in advance she was going to betray me. So how could I have the most satisfying love imaginable knowing that she doesn't really love me back in the, in the way that I love her? It's not requited. So it can't be the most satisfying love imaginable because the most satisfying love imaginable is definitely powerfully requited. And I've got this knowledge that she's going to betray me in six months time, in five months time, in four months time, in three months time. So I'm going to have that ruining my feelings about her during that time. And I'll know that she doesn't really love me back. But so it can't possibly be the most satisfying love imaginable. So the question sort of breaks if I know in advance that she's going to betray me. Um, so the question's broken if I know in advance, but it, if I don't know in advance, and it is a shock and a, a, a surprise, do you know what? I, I might actually prefer the first scenario where I'm giving someone a wonderful send-off rather than just being hurt by someone I thought loved me, but it turns out didn't. Um, in love, is intensity or permanence more important to you? Well, there are functions of love. We've evolved to feel, to, to feel love for, for good reasons. Uh, at first, the intensity is what brings you together and uh, makes you put the effort in to win them and then um, uh, perhaps you know, um, produce a couple of children. And then it's important with humans that you stick around because humans take a long time to, to bring up. And once a child has got past the age of about six, they're reasonably safe. But those first five years of their life uh, is danger period. So it's really handy to have two parents looking after you. So you're far more likely to pass on your genes if your love has some permanence. So um, I would say probably permanence is more important because the intensity can be replaced by lust. You can just think of someone so much that you end up uh, producing children anyway. Um, but the permanence is what makes you stick around to make sure that those kids are OK and don't die uh, and are brought up properly and are likely to thrive in later life and produce kids of their own. So uh, in evolutionary terms, I would say permanence is probably the more important of the two. As for human happiness, um, again, I think for humanity at large, uh, is good. It's probably better if people do uh, stick around and um, not betray each other constantly left, right and centre and have mad, passionate but extremely short-term flings left, right and centre. It would be a very unstable world, very unstable and dangerous society to be in. There'd be so much jealousy and that could lead to violence and all sorts of nastiness. So I'm going to go with permanence there. How much do you expect from someone who loves you? Again, this one's pretty easy because I expect them to behave as though they loved me which by definition they will, because if they do love me, then they will behave as though they love me. Uh, it could be that your your friend, your, your uh, brother or whatever um, can be really annoying uh, some days and neglectful and, and, and so forth. But if they do really love you, it will show at some point. You know, when the crisis hits, they'll be there. And when your birthday comes around, they'll still buy you a present even though they can't afford it they will buy you that present because deep down they really love you. And psychological ex experiments on people I've shown again and again, for instance, they've done experiments where they get people to endure pain. And the longer you endure the pain, the more someone else gets paid. Um, and they say, right, your friend here will get paid one pound per minute that you can hold your hand in this bucket of ice, um, iced water. And uh, people will try and try and try and Oh, after three minutes, sorry, I just got to take their hand out. So this friend of yours gets three pounds. But you don't tell them how long they lasted. You just say, OK, and now your brother will get paid. And it's interesting that people last longer when they're, um, they're enduring pain uh, for their close relatives than they do for their friends. So sometimes they don't actually know how much deep down they really love people. So maybe your parents, brother, whoever it is you fear may not love you. Maybe deep down they do and even they don't know it as well as you. Um, so uh, behave as though you love uh, as though you love someone. What would make you feel betrayed by your mate? Indifference, dishonesty, infidelity? Well, not indifference. I mean, it'd be horrible to love someone and for them to be indifferent to you. That would be pretty horrible, but it's not, it's not a betrayal exactly. Dishonesty, yes, definitely. I hate being lied to. Uh, infidelity, obviously bad, but actually I think it normally goes hand in hand with dishonesty and I think I could bounce back more readily from from uh, a bit of infidelitude, that's a word I've just made up, um, than I could from 
from dishonesty being being lied to i think would would hurt me more so so there you go don't lie to me and there this video would end normally, but I'm going to stick a little addendum on this one because one of my uh, Facebook followers, and if you want to be one of my Facebook followers, you're, you're perfectly wel welcome. There's a link in the description. Um, suggested that in these videos, I read out the next question that I'm going to be answering so that uh, my viewers have a chance to think about it in advance of the next video. Uh, but I think that that's going to be a little bit tedious if I read out the next question every single time. So instead, I'm going to include the following um, question in the description uh, below for each of these future videos. So look below and you'll find uh, the next question I'll be answering and I'll stick to that formula in future. But I won't be adding this message every single time because, well, that would get pretty tedious, wouldn't it?